Once there were two sisters named Maggie and Mabel. They lived in a very special house. Do you know why the house was special? It's because the house was magic. When Maggie and Mabel wanted to go to a faraway place, the house would take them there. All they had to do was put their arms up in the air and think about a faraway place. One day, Maggie and Mabel decided that they would like to go to the beach. They put their arms up in the air, the wind blew up, they covered their eyes, the sky turned orange, the house shook and whirled, and suddenly it became calm. They opened their eyes. This is the beach! They cried with great excitement. We will go for a walk in the sand. Maggie and Mabel loved the beach. It was warm and sunny and the wind blew in their hair. As they were walking, they saw a large pile of sand. They walked around the sand. <gasps> On the other side of the sand pile, they saw a big dark hole. They walked over to the hole, but they couldn't see anything. It was so dark. So they got down on their knees and they looked a bit closer and they put their hands in. <gasps> there was something in the hole. What was that? It was something cold and hard. Wow! They started smoothing the sand away and carefully they pushed the sand off and pulled the hard, smooth object up and up, and up, and up. <gasps> it was a soldier, a stone soldier. They picked him up and stood him on the sand. And a big, big black bird was flying overhead, having a very good look. Then there were more soldiers. They kept on digging and pulled out one soldier, two soldiers, three soldiers, four soldiers. It was so exciting, they decided to take a selfie with one of the soldiers. Click! They would be able to keep that in their very special book. Later, when they grew older, they found out that what they had found in the hole were the terracotta warriors who used to live in China. They talked about what to do with the terracotta warriors. They talked and talked and while they were talking some blackbirds flew overhead to listen to their conversation and also, wow this must be magic, some grasses started to grow on the hot dry sand. Well, at the end of their conversation, they decided to put the terracotta warriors back into the hole because they really shouldn't mess with stuff like that. It really had to go back to China one day. And that was the end of a lovely day. Now it's time to go home. Walking back on the sand, they saw a very interesting bike. Maybe we can go home faster. Yes, let's do that. So they hopped on the bike and Maggie helped Mabel up on the back of the bike and off they rode in the wind. And they enjoyed it very much. When they looked up in the sky, they saw birds soaring around. They even saw an aeroplane and they saw beautiful colours in the sky. And there was the house. They had got back to the house. They carefully got off their bike and they walked back up the steps all the way into their lovely house. Now it's time to go home. So up went their hands and the house started shaking and the sky turned orange and there they go all the way back home. The end of a fantastic adventure.
Then Maggie said, Let's start seeing Baby Liam. Chapter 3 Liam's Special Secret Maggie and Mabel were in their magic house for quite a few weeks, having a lovely time. In the morning, they would go and pick flowers. Sometimes they would go for walks. But one day, Maggie said to Mabel, I would like to see Liam. I would like to find him. Liam's got something very special, I think, to tell us. Let's go and find him. They didn't really know where Liam was. So they asked their uncles and aunties, do you know where Liam is now? Well, one of their uncles and aunties said, I think Liam is somewhere in Washington, D.C. Maggie and Mabel looked up Washington, D.C. on Google and found out that it was a very, very important city in America. And they said to their magic house, will you take us to Washington, D.C.? Then we can go and find Liam. So up went their hands and the house started shaking and the sky turned orange and there they go. The house landed with a thud in the garden. They looked out of the window and there was a very, very big white house right next door. They didn't know what the white house was but they thought that might be worth a visit. Anyway, they didn't really know where else to go, so they decided to have a very good look at Washington, D.C. from the river. So they walked down to the edge of the water, and there they found a boat. The captain of the boat was a very friendly fellow named Georgie. I think his full name was Mr. Washington, but they didn't call him Mr. Washington because he didn't really mind because they were Australian. They jumped in the boat and Georgie took them up the river and down the river. And from the boat they could see all the interesting buildings in Washington DC. They looked at the buildings and thought, hmm, maybe Liam's in one of those buildings. Let's go and see. We saw a lot of very interesting buildings. The first one was a meeting in the, wall, in the Hall of Congress. Did anyone see Liam in that meeting? We looked and looked, but we didn't see anybody. So then we went to the Smithsonian Museum. One of those museums has lots of old planes. That was very interesting. We enjoyed that little visit, but we didn't see Liam there either. Anyway, Maggie and Mabel thought, Maybe we'll be able to see more if we catch a train. Then we can go much, much faster and look out of the window. Maybe we'll see Liam that way. Maggie and Mabel were very happy to sit down for a little while because they'd been walking for a long time. There they saw a house outside of the window that looked just like their magic house. I wonder if it's the same house. Hmm, very nice though, isn't it? Oh, there's a fire truck. Does that mean there's a fire at our house? No, it's not our house, is it, Mabel? Said Maggie. No, I don't think it was. And then they saw a large monument and there was the river again. 
It was a beautiful trip on the train. They really enjoyed it. And then they passed a little airport, which had a very old-fashioned aeroplane. And underneath the aeroplane, they wondered if they saw Liam. Looked like Liam's legs, but they weren't sure. Then they saw a man chasing a buffalo on horseback. That looked scary. And then they saw this big, big white house. Looked just like the house they were parked next to. Wonder if it was the same one. Maybe we should get off the train and investigate. That White House might be worth a visit. They knocked on the door and they were taken into President Obama's special office, which I believe they call an Oval Office. President Obama was very happy to see them and asked them, have you girls had any lunch today? You've been out, out and about for quite a while. You must be hungry. Hang on a minute, I'll make a phone call to my friend Jerry and see if he's got some burgers at his restaurant and we can go and have some lunch. I'll give Jerry a bit of a hand in the kitchen. So off they went, one on each side of Obama, President of the United States, walking to the restaurant. And there they got lovely burgers that Obama was making himself. He's really pretty good dab hand in the kitchen, you know? All right, all right, let's see what else. Uh, anybody else want something? Marvin, you want something? Very good. Cheeseburger and fries. President Obama, have you seen Liam? We're looking for him everywhere. And we think that it's possible he might be at your place. Because you've got a pretty big place and lots of rooms where he could be hiding. Do you think that's possible? Could we come back and have a good look ourselves? Thank you very much for the meal. We really enjoyed it. Maggie said, oh my goodness, there he was, reading a book in the corner. All the children were partying, but Liam was very, very busy reading his secret business in the book. In one of the rooms, they saw a man sitting very high in a very big chair. They went up to the chair and looked up and asked the man, have you seen our Liam? He shook his head, no. Sorry, I haven't seen him. They thought they'd just check behind the chair, so they had a quick look and then they were on their way again. reading his very secret book he told them his very very special secret his special secret was that President Obama had asked him to be the pilot of the space shuttle oh my goodness what a fantastic adventure Liam was having in Washington DC five minutes now until Atlantis is touched down Seeing here the same view that the commander and pilot are seeing from their heads up display as they approach. Charlie Hobob flaring up the shuttle's nose for landing, and as you can see, the main gear of wrapping up a four million four hundred ninety thousand. 138 mile flight to the International Space Station. Houston Atlantis, we'll stop. 
Roger, wheel stop Atlantis. That was a picture-perfect end to a top-fueled mission to the space station.